I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Welcome, Sorry everyone. It's all right. Welcome to Faversham Town Council Planning Committee meeting, Tuesday the 27th. And we'd like to welcome first Mr. Andrew Owen and Mr. James DeMello. Yeah, uh, is it? Thank you. Correct me. Um, Crest Nicholson, you've come to uh, do a little presentation. I'll yep. hand over to, is it Andrew first or is it? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first. That's fine. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Andrew Owen. I'm the planning manager at Crest Nicholson. Um, James and I, myself, obviously, keen to show you the initial proposals um, for what forms the second phase to our site at Lady Dane Farm. Mm -hmm. um, as you'll be aware, obviously, <clears throat> constructing at the moment the first phase, um, which is underway. And I think previously, um, colleagues have, have met with the town council to go through those proposals. So we're obviously keen to keep up the engagement and, and make sure that you're supportive of what's coming forward. We do, we do have an initial sketch layout we can probably share with you, which is always the best way generally to talk through things. Um, but I'll sort of hand over to James just to introduce himself. And Yeah. Um, evening, everyone. James DeMello, also from Crest Nicholson. Thanks for your time this evening and for allowing us to speak. Um, I work within the same department as Andrew um, on the land side. Um, so just working together to try and bring this this next phase forward um and with, with that note what i'd like to do is, is just bring up um where we are to date with our our latest sketch layout um and as i try and do that i'm getting a notification notification to say that i can't share um so i'm not i'll, I'll try and do it james bear with me yeah. that's okay. fine I think Adrian has to enable screen share. I have. You have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try it again. There we go. I can do it now, Andrew. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Thank you for that. Right. So let's bring this up. Is it worth giving giving it? I'm I'm sure you're aware of the planning history there. There's a fair amount that's that's gone forward. It's so essentially, the adopted Swale local plan, Bearing Fruits local plan, allocated the site under policy MU6 for um, 260 units and a range of other mixed uses. Crest came forward with a, an application under the outline um, once we'd sort of secured interest with it um, and secured the first phase. Um, and obviously then this phase is coming forward under the adopted local plan. I'm sure you're aware of the new local plan and proposals for East Faversham, um, which obviously is for, uh, you know extensive further development of a range of uses in the area. Um, and whilst we're interested because it's obviously related to this site, it's it's nothing that we're we're sort of currently involved with. So we're sort of still under the adopted local plan and just just watching that um, to see how that emerges. I think numerous landowners and um, different mm. stakeholders there, so fairly complicated. Um, but this is ultimately sort of an extension to our existing phase. So access comes from our current site and it extends down to the south, to the east of the proposed um, cricket pitch um, or sports facility, depending on on what interests um, is secured by the landowner. So, so, so Andrew, can I just ask a few questions on that? Because I think it's one of the most, my one of the most important aspects of it. Yeah. So just yeah. to help <laughs> orient it myself. So to, to the left-hand side of the screen, the, so the other side of the, where, where is Love Lane on this? Here we go. Um, can you see, can you see this by any chance? Uh, the, can you see my Google browser? No, not at the moment, James. You might have to reshare it. If you just um, so love, love Lane for your benefit is to the west, so to the left hand side, Love Lane runs sort of yeah. over yeah. over that way. Hi. 
Okay. And Greg, you wrote to the north. Right. Okay, great. So the the and, and obviously the bit which is great out is the is phase one development. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So just in terms of the sports pitch, because I understand that was you know identified within the section one hundred six, and originally it was pegged as a cricket pitch, but given the lack of interest from the local cricket club, I think in the space, it's it's now been well, it's it's now no longer going to be a cricket pitch. Can you tell me where? You are with the discussion. Is is that are Crest Nicholson involved in that piece of work on that piece of land? We're, we're, we're in. Oh, do you want to pick that up, James? Yeah, I mean, it, just just because it relates to sort of the the former land deal. So it, I, I'll, I'll sort of pick that up. Um, so we don't. Um, we're not involved with the cricket pitch um, or the open space provision. Um, that was secured with the original outline um, that that still resides with um, the original landowner of the site. Um, but we are in um, for, for obvious reasons, we, we are keeping up to date with where they've progressed that as obviously it's quite key to sort of the outlook from the residential development and, and sort of one of the key uses for, for the site coming forward. So what we understand today is that, as you mentioned, there, there was no interest um, for the local cricket team to take um, the space um, as, as they've secured a, a longer lease in the duchy land to the south. Um, however, that there has been, I think, quite recently some interest from a football club. Um, so that, that's what I understand is currently being explored um, with the landowner and, and Swale Borough Council, um, which that came from Paul Gregory. So they're just, I think they're trying to understand what their requirements are um, in terms of space and design for that open space. Um, so that that's that's the latest on it. Unfortunately, there's not much more detail than that um, at this current time. Okay. And, and that, that sports pitch extends from the tree, the tree line down, down to the public footpath to the south um it it, it doesn't extend all the way um further south so it, it's actually it's, it's not um illustrated very well here but it's it's in a cir circle type space effectively where my curse is being drawn and then to the south um there is further open space but it's not it's not the sports pitch um provision that it falls within and, and sorry, final question, because I know you're keen. keen no, that's fine. The, the, the other open space, which is indicated within the phase two. Yes. It, are you involved with that open space? Or again, is it, does it, it's, its use and development lie with the landowner? So, so that, that would be us um, in, in this scenario. So our, our, um, our interest is in respect of the entire red line um, which surrounds the site, so it would include that open space. Um, we, we've had one pre-up with Swale Borough Council today. It was a, a fairly positive one. Um, however, we, we, we haven't got any sort of details yet from the public open space officer as, you know, in, in regard to what they may like to see there. Um, obviously, we, we've got some of our own thoughts and, you know, we're working with a landscape architect to try and develop that and sort of, you know, one of the key bits for us being ins well, ensuring that, that there, there's quite a bit of biodiversity, which which is generated from that open space, um, as, as is, you know, quite, quite a hot topic, I think, on most local authorities' agendas at the moment. Yeah. Um, so that's something we'll be focusing on. Um, but in terms of um, you know any any other items um, that ha we have in mind for the open space, it's still early early doors. Yeah. This is a sketch scheme, so um, Connect connection to the public footpath, obviously being being obvious as well yeah. in terms of getting some strong links to the south. But um, and then obviously with the new local plan and potential development that comes further east. You know, having some sort of connection through there is something that's well mentioned um, mm -hmm. to ensure the future <laughs> connection. Um, that would be sort of via, you know, footpath or cycle link as opposed to anything as a vehicular link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just the, the 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 other thing you're probably not aware of is we're also developing a neighbourhood plan, mm -hmm. um, which will be 
I don't know what your timelines are. I presume you, so by the, it's quite possible by the time you, you, you're developing the detailed scheme that it may be at least out for a public consultation. So it's just something to be aware of. Yeah, that's that's useful to know. What what sort of time scales or, well, or stage uh, are you at currently? We, we we hope to have it out for consultation later this year. Okay. So, so you you have you haven't put in the outline application yet, right? No. So we're coming forward with a full detailed application for this second phase. I think just just to clarify, in, in you know uh, relation to your previous comments. The landowner submitted the original outline with all the various uses, uh, okay, yeah. and Crest then came forward and secured the housing element of the first phase. But all of the other uses remain the responsibility of the landowner. In this case, the red line that you can see there is is the extent of our interest, and we'll be responsible for everything that comes forward within that. Um, but we're likely to come forward in the next couple of months probably with an application i think the the architectural style and and detail would you know we'd look to have have this you know a uh, continuation of what we did on the first phase logically and um, we're not looking for anything different to, to the materials and things that came forward there um but if there's anything you know even if you've had early conversations about the sort of things that you would like to see come forward we're obviously more than willing to to listen yeah. and engage with you on that to ensure you know you're supportive of of the pro proposals again that would be really useful we actually have a design code um which is being finalized in the next few weeks it's just with locality at the minute and now it's a public domain document we'd be happy to share it with you right. but you That'd know useful. I, I don't wish to dominate this discussion tonight but we, we, we can continue the conversation yeah that's that's perfect I guess the main, you know, if you're, if there are any elements of the first phase you're happy with or, you know, not so happy with, it's useful to know, and that can that can obviously help feed into into what comes forward here, um, as a guide. Um, but yeah, in general, we've we've obviously looked to ca carry the, the a similar um, residential form and you know layout pattern of of the first phase, so the sort of the road coming in through the center of the site um, allows a sort of grid formation, provides the opportunity for sort of a strong outlook to the east and then some nice plots with an with a outlook to the south over that open space. And similarly, again, to the sports pitch and, and sort of surveilling that area, depending on what comes forward. Civils wise, the site falls to the north, so there's a requirement for some um, attenuation basins in the sort of area of open space sure. um, yeah. that James is kindly putting the hand over. So again, a really good opportunity for some sort of biodiversity improvements and enhancements within there. Um, and obviously it's looking at all of those bits and pieces and I understand Swell are quite big on um, sort of improvements in energy and, and things like that at the moment. So yeah. um, car charging points and, and looking at you know solar panels or whatever we can do to mm -hmm. um help help meet those regulations i think the tricky tricky position at the moment is they don't have anything from a policy perspective um to secure that you know if you i'm sure many developers would go down the route of arguing those sort of things out but you know we're quite keen to have you know a, a straightforward journey on this and you know, certain yeah. things I think we support anyway as a company and wouldn't particularly want to argue and, you know, PV panels and charging points and things are all, you know, yes. worthwhile measures to future-proof the homes in any case. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think, I, yeah. Sorry, Andrew, can I just comment on the green space bit in your yeah. drawing? Um, one just for your information as much as anything else one of the reasons that green space was in the position it was in on the original outline was so that the views across the town centre to the spirus areas could still be seen from uh, Brandy Corner so you might want to take that into account when you're designing what you're going to put in there yeah yeah we uh, yeah it's a really yeah really good point we 
we actually had a landscape study done for our first phase, which took views from the public footpath across to sort of ensure that that view was retained. So, um, yeah, we're, we're working up proposals to ensure that that corridor is still maintained. Um, but that's a good point. I think we're interested to hear really what the, um, the yeah the parks officer as well has in has in mind for the open space. But um, sort of two or three weeks, James, is it since since we yeah. had a meeting? So been fairly fairly slow to come forward with anything at the moment um but it's it's just trying to get the balance right and we're having a ecological surveys and things carried out which will help show us the sort of biodiversity position and help inform um proposals to to achieve a net gain across the site there's certainly enough foxes over there <laughs> yes yeah there are <laughs> there are right are there any other questions for Andrew and James? Yeah, could I could I come in? Um, you can, uh, Councillor Saunders. Yeah, um, as as you're saying, it's uh, because of the the you know, the scale of development beyond this development um, uh, linkages into to the town, particularly for people on uh, foot and uh, who are uh, cycling, are going to be quite key. Um, is there is there is there anything any planning within this for uh, having separated cycleways or a separate separated route, um, which will allow make it easier for people to to cycle into into town? Um, the other thing I because you mentioned about things like um, solar panels, um, are you planning at all to have houses that don't um, use gas central heating? Pump. Mm -hmm. The picking up the the cycle, the point we uh, Swale did mention a similar thing, and it's they're wondering whether there's potential to upgrade the public footpath to be a sort of footpath cycleway. So that was one of the things um, we we're waiting to hear back on whether that's something. Um, obvious, you know, for obvious reasons, we would control the area within the red line, and it's not particularly good if it then returns to just a footpath either side of it. Um, we can obviously within the site provide a cycle weight. Um, James, I'm not sure on phase one what what the yeah. situation is, and that that would be the only concern is if yeah. it obviously within phase one, then you were back to a sort of reduced footpath. But I know with the phase one proposal, there were um, requirements to sort of provide connections, and there's there's a point by the roundabout in the um, northwest corner <laughs> to connect through. But those are all, yeah, all elements that we'll definitely consider. Um, on the central heating point, we're still at the moment with gas boilers. The new building regs come in, I think, from June 23, and there will be a requirement then to move to electric boilers. So um, it's something that, as a company, we're, we're reviewing at the moment, ultimately. Um, but... Currently, the proposal would be to use sort of gas central heating still um, yeah. under the current regs. And pick, pick, picking up on Andrew's point as well, I mean, the, the, the new regs which are coming in, I, I think will will sort of shake up the whole industry, if I'm honest, and, and, and you'll see a lot of changes from from the various house builders. Speaking with some of our, you know, our, our technical colleagues um, regularly on this, um, one of the main not I wouldn't say issues because I think it can be overcome but with um, electric boilers as we currently speak is is having the capacity in the local network that seems to be what we're, we're coming up against um, on on various developments where where those questions are also being asked um, just in terms of so obviously we, we, within the site um, with the additional units coming forward we we can we can do the upgrading works required for that. And, and this site has reserve capacity um, as, as was the case when we, we brought forward the first phase. Um, with, with, swap, with, with switching to um, an, an, an all electric heating system, um, it, it, it puts a, a much larger strain on the, on the network in the area. So it's, it's something we'll, we'll be working on with sort of local energy providers as well um, as the regulations come forward. Um, but as, as Andrew says at the moment, the boiling system still still seems to be predominantly dominated by gas, unfortunately. Um, but that, those, those are why, you know, in the meantime, we're, 
we're trying to look at the the, the other alternative methods um, of, of bringing sustainability into the schemes. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I think that might have to come to a close there because we have got some planning to get in before okay. the seven o'clock meeting. Sorry about that. Um, but maybe you, you know, keep us updating and come back again and there be more questions. Uh, it is, I go past the development and I absolutely think it's looking great at the moment. Really good. Oh, please do. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that our neighbour two doors down is definitely buying one up there, sold hers. I think she's getting more for her money when she's looked on some of the other developments. So it is quite good, uh, uh, yeah, words going out there about the development. So that's great. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank evening. you all for your time. Really appreciate that. And, yeah, we'll, we'll come back Super. and hopefully present some house Absolutely. types and things. Yes, that's great then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good, good evening. Night. Bye. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Yeah, got to go back now. Oh, quick. Uh, have we got anyone waiting? Um, no. No. So really, I need not ask about questions and allowing time for those. There's no one there to ask questions. Is that correct? That's correct. Correct. Right. Item one, apologies for absence. Uh, Councillor Barker and Councillor Perkin. Thank you. Two declarations. Of oh, we'll do declarations and then we'll just do item six. Yes, exactly. Declarations. Is anyone any? Oh, Councillor Saunders. Um, yeah, I just wanted to declare that I'm a Swale cabinet member and the central, there's a, uh, an item about the central car park and the map mast. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just want to make, make you aware that it's, uh, it's a non Thank you. Of interest. Thank you. Right, yes, and non funeral. Yes, thank you. Right, item three to receive and accept the minutes. I thought they were fine. Had anyone got any issues that they wanted to bring up regarding the minutes? I'm happy to second the proposal to accept them, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Can we all vote on that? Right. And I think we're moving to item four now. Uh, Councillor Irwin, has he had to go? Has he, he said he would be leaving us. I think he's on his phone. Right. He said he would have to go at 6.30 and he particularly wants to be involved with that item. So should we go back to number oh, is five? Is that item six, Madam Mayor? The, um... Yeah. He'd asked us to bring it forward because he has to leave at half six. Thank you. Yeah, yes, the Borton, yeah, item six, bring it to item four. Right, shall we leave that maybe though and go to uh, to receive the planning schedule, 6th mm -hmm. of April? We could go through that. When I checked that, I didn't find any issues with that. No, Anyone? I think we can accept that, Madam Mayor. I think we can as well. Um, so I will second that. Um, can we just vote on that? Everybody? Thank you. So, to receive the planning schedule, all oh, done. And uh, to consider and make, well, Councillor Irwin, is he ready to do item six now, I wonder? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can. Would you oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. item six to consider making representation on Bolton and Dunkirk neighbourhood plan regulation fourteen? We're asked to consider under the following headings: housing, traffic and transport, environment, including design, other policies, and general comments. Would you like to come in on that, Councillor Owen? Yeah, I'm, happy, I'm certainly happy to start the conversation. Um, you know, I, I've had time to uh, to, to read and uh, sort of consider uh, what what has been proposed. You know, per personally, I think given that it's for a parish, uh, without you know, it's it's for a different parish. Um, 
it's it's beyond our jurisdiction. I don't think it's necessarily appropriate for me to comment on specific elements of the plan. But I think it's very important that as a uh, a planning committee and and and, uh, and a, a a kind of parish of our own, I think we should uh, commend uh, the Bolton and Dunkirk for developing a neighbourhood plan. And really, I think we should just wish them every success with it. I think it's it's a great initiative. Uh, I know they've been working on it for several years, yes, and I, I think it's, it's really good that, that they've reached a point that that's out for public consultation. And I just wanted to express, um, you know, my my my, my um, uh, yeah, really really ex express the fact that they've done a great job, and I, and I wish them every success. That's great, thank you. I'm sure we all do, actually. We, we all wish them every success with that. So, unless there's anything else to say, any other councillor? Councillor Saunders? Um, yeah, I wanted to say some, just very briefly to the things to what uh, Councillor Irwin said. Um, I took a look at the transport policies and I was, I was pleased to see that there's a commitment yeah. to improving cycling and walking there. And I think in the, the town council's developing a local cycling and walking infrastructure plan, if we, mm -hmm. I presume the consultation is going back to the to the parish. I think perhaps we should say that we'd be keen to work with them uh, on uh, improving cycling and walking in in the area. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's great. Then I think we all agreed on that. Yeah, um, Councillor Martin. Yeah, I'm. I am. I think it's a very good document. Absolutely. Um, I am, it is strange that there is a comment about some of the land adjoining the parish boundary in Faversham, which mm. I know is included in the local plan. Um, my only comment would be, I hope that the, uh, the um, neighbourhood plan says the development site that's in Bolton Parish would be in conflict with the aims of this plan protect the rural gap between Bolton and Faversham. Um, I, I purely note, I think we should say this, that I hope that doesn't mean that this local plan is not suitable for uh, as far as um, other bodies that have to comment on it are, because I'd hate to see it thrown out for that one section, um, because I think it's a very, very good local plan. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? No other comments, so we're happy, all in agreement with that. Thank you. If we can go um, to item well, five now, to receive the planning schedule. Oh, oh, no, we're done. Six, to consider and make representation to the relevant authorities on planning applications. And we will start with 2150-1743 TPO, Street Record Bank Street. Two silver birches raise the crown prune maxima four meter. I really didn't know where this was, but I do now. I went and had a look. Um, it's the area we are hoping to place a bench. Um, so, Councillor Williams. It's just for information because it's our own application. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought no, it was. Just for information. Let's <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you. Information. So 2150 1636 TCA uh, conservation area notification, crown, re crown reduced of Malice tree down to the second lateral branch to the left facing the tree and to over the top of the tree, reshape the back, the outer canopy of the tree all round, leaving the final height five metres and width of four metres to remove the water shoots from the main stem and the internal crown. Councillor Williams, does that sound the okay, right thank thing? You. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to speak on this. Thank you. Uh, the, um, I, I, I think there's no reason to object. I think it seems um, suitable maintenance to the tree. Mm -hmm. um, and but it's not particularly radical uh, pruning either. So I would suggest or I propose that no objection. Thank you. Any other comments? Do I have a seconder? I'm happy to second that. Can we all vote? I can't actually see who's... Vote. Yes, I've got one now. Yes, yes, we're voting. Thank you. That was unanimous. And 
Item 2150-1637, TCA, 21 East Street, Conservation Area, one, to attend the tall holly tree located to the rear garden area. Due to this tree being located near the rear of the property, it has been agreed to reduce the tree down by approximately two metre and the outer canopy of the tree is to be reduced back on either side by one, Point five, one, one point five. So it is clear of the properties on both sides and all round. Uh, again, Councillor Williams, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, again, I um, I can't see any any issues with it. In fact, um, looking at the photos, it's it's very close to, to telephone lines. Um, so I'd almost be um, tempted to say we support this application in order to make you know. It's, it doesn't cause any any problems with um with uh, phone lines so i'm happy to suppose we support it thank you i'm happy to I'll second that <laughs> right thank you councillor martin and can we all vote on that just need our fourth yes thank you <laughs> that's great and um 21 39 Court Street, Conservation Area Notification to Fell One Cherry Tree. Councillor Williams, thank you. Would you comment? Yeah, I'm happy to. Thank you. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little bit concerned by the by this application, and and um, in the sense of uh, I can I can understand the applicant's concerns regarding the, the height of the tree. Um, and also the potential problem um, to, or the concerns that it could cause problems to their neighbours. Um, my 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 initial thought was that I I think to fail the tree would be a shame, and I think that in the first instance, really, they should consider maybe getting the tree pruned. Um, I I personally think that we sh we should object. Um, because I don't think I don't, based on the information given, I can't see it's fully justified to fell the tree in this instance. I mean, clearly, obviously, if it's surveyed and a tree officer looks at it, um, mm. they might have a different view. But in my my opinion, um, you know, from our, our perspective, I think we should object. Thank you. Any other comments? No, uh, I'm happy to second that. Could we all vote on that? Thank you. Hold on. Sorry, hold on. I was just looking and checking the database. The picture of the cherry tree is on this application, not the previous one, and the telephone lines. Um, oh, I don't I've know. I've just gone on the database and it's, it's this one. Oh, you okay. Know. Yeah. Oh, is that why? Um, okay, well, is that a good reason? Yes. I mean, I mean, even 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 so, I mean, um, I still don't think it's a reason to chop the tree down completely. No, no. 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 So I would, I would, so I would I, if 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 we if we if we just say that um, it's object, but based on the fact that we think that it could be. Um, suitably pruned in order to kind of mm. mitigate any damage yes exactly, the word. if they just um, bring it us, they'll come back and tell us yeah thank you uh 21 can we just, can we just oh do we really uh, need to go as, as, yeah we've changed it so just get a seconder and vote thank second you second yes and then can we all vote on that change yes thank you 2150 full, 53 Abbey Street, insertion of replacement double glazed sash windows. Uh, Councillor Saunders, you're mute. I, I don't see there's any reason to object to. No, to this. I didn't. Yeah. No, absolutely fine. Any comments, or I'm happy to second. And can we all vote? No objection. Thank you. 
We're back again on 21500896 Zanweg, Mutton Lane, or Springe. Direction of two story side extension and lock conversion with pitch dormer windows to front and rear elevations. It's a resubmission. Um, we've had already had the invite for planning committee for this one. Yes. So I'm not sure that our comment at this point is going to make any. Just to be aware, I'm not saying don't comment, but. Does anyone have comment? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my only comment is that since we originally looked at this, yeah. I note that uh, Planning Commission for Development uh, near this site has been now given for, um, I think it's two or three houses um, on an adjacent plot of land or near adjacent. Um, so it may change our, our opinion. Personally, I, I still think that what we said in the first place is is valid in that the um, type of property that it is yeah um, is actually sought after in the area and um, but I can also understand why the person has put it in and I I, I think we just stand by our original comments thank you thank you councillor Saunders did you wish to comment on that I think you did last time um yeah I um, um I, I'm in kind of two minds about this. I, I mean, I think they have yeah. made improvements in the uh, proposal. Um, and I'm looking, it looks as though the, the officers at Swale are recommending that it's uh, uh, approved um, now. Um, so I'm, I'm, well, I'm interested to hear other people's uh, uh, opinion, really. Uh, as I say, I'm not, I'm kind of un, a bit undecided it, as to whether we should continue to object. At this I stage, think, I think they made stipulations to, well. to object. Then, really, somebody needs to go to the meeting on Thursday at this stage if, if you do want to object. So, we need to decide, Councillor Williams. Yeah, I, 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 you know, there's there's there's, there's others that have come up like this where they they've they've kind of listens to the feedback and they've kind of adapted it um i i didn't write many de many notes because i i a bit like council soldiers I, I wasn't 100 percent sure my my feeling was that it, it probably has answered some of the issues we had um and i'd probably be more inclined to not object now but um but equally, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's a difficult one because these are quite complex applications. They, you know, you've got a lot of information added to it. Um, and personally, I don't think I'd have the, the justifiable things to actually sit there and at swale planning and object to it based on the fact that they've addressed some of the things that we've initially talked about. So um, my, my, my feeling probably is that we, we now do no objection. Councillor, sorry. Sorry, yeah, Councillor Saunders, would you go with that proposal, or are you still? Uh, no, I, I, I would. Um, I'd be happy to second that proposal of Councillor Williams's. Um, right. Shall we vote on that then? The second. Oh, I'm happy to agree on that. I think we're all agreeing on that now. Yes. So no objection with a comment that some concerns have been answered. And because of the planning permission given for a neighbouring area, the yeah. area eventually changed anyway. They have, they have. Yeah, definitely. And it's stipulated about parking as well, I think. Um, right, 21 37 The Knoll. Erection of a two-storey side extension and front porch. Again, revised details. Um, I think we objected last time, but it is on a corner. Yes. It, it doesn't overlook anyone either way. And the road that comes down there is now, you cannot travel down there. So I'm unsure on this as to why we did object. Does anyone, um, Councillor Williams? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the, 
a couple of things have come through since the last time we commented on this. I mean, um, there's a neighbour comment who has... Um, yes, supports it, really. Supports yeah. it. I mean, yeah. I mean clearly, clearly, um, you know, we can't take that as, as sort of gospel, that that's kind of a reason to support it, but but it's, it's worth noting. Um, and um, I've noticed that the Faversham Society um, Planning Committee have... Um, have, have put, still suggested to object i i personally i mean it, it, if this was an application in the kind of the heart of of um the, the middle of a town where conservation mm. kind of aesthetics of buildings are kind of more crucial i could understand i reading back to what, what we said before i kind of i, I don't necessarily disagree with what we said before but you know having taken into consideration where this building is and yeah. what they're doing, I, mm. I, I'm inclined to change my mind. And I, I don't necessarily suggest that other people might have different views on it, but my, my personal opinion is I, I would would suggest we don't object now um, because I can't see a reason to object yeah. anymore, my, I, myself personally. So that's my personal view. I absolutely agree with that. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Saunders. Yeah, I, 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 the comment, the comments that we forwarded focus on uh, the windows, which have mm. been um, addressed. But I, I think we did have uh, similar concerns to the Faversham Society about the, the bulk and the height of the um, extension and its its kind of a relatively prominent position on on the corner there. I mean, I, I recognise the comments from from a neighbour. Mm. Um, it, yeah, it isn't it? Know it. How independent yeah. they, uh, they are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my my personal feeling would be still to um, object. I think when you look at what happened with with Sandwig, the you know the Mutton Lane mm. proposal, you know our objections have kind of gradually made the uh, extension more acceptable. And I think uh, at this stage, I would still feel that we we should object. Um, on the on the similar basis to the Fabian Society around the bulk and the height and the prominence of the position. Right, um, Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, I mean they've improved it a bit. I'm uh, not uh -huh. denying that. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of those the more i look at it the more it still seems very blocky to me and our original objections still seem okay. about right although the additional um windows that they put into it does yeah. up a lot more and i do think that's to be commended um i'm i'm easy either way in a way on this one i mean i think we could could perhaps accept it but what i always worry about in areas like this is that you do one and then you end up with 21 um where maybe that that sort of um recruitment plan would not be as suitable um and i think that's something we have to look at but um I, i'm happy to go with um what others have suggested on this one it is a, a corner plot so it you know it is um not everyone will be able to... Are you seconding Councillor Williams? No objection then. You're seconding Councillor Williams. Yeah, I'll second that one. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I'm happy to vote with that. Councillor Saunders, though. Yeah, there's I'll, not... I'll vote against that. Right. OK. Thank you. Right, um, 21500920, Tesco Stores, Crescent Road, installation of three fast EB chargers. Wow. Any comments on that? Uh, Councillor Williams. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I think, I think our previous applications, we've supported this, um, and oh. I think we should support it again. Yeah. Um, because I think it's it's clearly a very um, central location to have these, and it's good that they're putting three in, um, and it's good for people that shop in in Tesco. Um, mm. So, yeah, I, I I I would propose that we support 
support the application. Thank you. Is there Councillor Saunders? I'm happy to second that. Thank you. And I would agree with that. And Councillor Martin, yes, can we all vote on that? Thank you. They're fast charges, that's great. Um, 2150 full, 48 the null, erection of a single storey rear extension. Uh, Councillor Saunders. Um, I propose that we don't uh, object uh, to this. I don't think there's anything particularly to object. to object. No, I would second that. Um, can we all vote on that? I think we're all happy with that one. Thank you. 2150, 14, 12, Faversham Railway Station, Station Road. Listed building consent for the installation of a port cabin building within the setting of the carriage shed building. Works completed. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I, I, I'm a little confused by them calling that the carriage shed, but um, I, I, because the carriage sheds um, that are listed, uh, are, there's also a carriage shed listed uh, in between the lines um around the love lane yes Street. yes um i think i would look at this and say um having knowledge um having worked there many years ago this is purely a replacement building um yes. there has always been a temporary structure in that position yes uh, for many years so i would say no objection thank you any other comments uh councillor williams um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to second no objection. The only, the only comment I would make is that it, it's so, it's like a lot of these things. I know I know it's not a residential address, but it's that kind of that that kind of bringing it to planning retrospectively. You know, it, it's kind of frustrating. But I mean, that's no reason to object, obviously. But no, um, no. But yeah, I, so I would second Councillor Martin's um, proposal. Thank you. No other comments? Could we vote on that? I'm happy to vote that. Thank you. 2150, 14, 15, 94 West Street, listed building consent for repairs to the guttering. Well, if they don't repair it, they'll be contaminated, I should think. A Councillor Saunders. I propose no objection to this. Right. Thank you. I would second that. Uh, can we all vote on that? Yes, fine, thank you. 21501480, One Chambers Wolf, New Creek Road, erection of single storey side extension beneath the existing first floor extension. I think that means, I haven't got first in there, but um, yes, any comments? No? No one. Oh, Councillor Williams. Um, I well, there, there's, 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 I think there's no reason to object, really. I mean, I know it's quite sort of um, quite close to a public footpath, but there's no objection from the oh, public right. rights of way. Um, they're obviously suggesting it won't kind of impact on, on that. Yeah. Um, I think aesthetically, thinking about the buildings, I don't think it would have an adverse effect. Uh, too much as far as I'm concerned anyway I, I, as I've understood it so yeah I, I would propose no objection. Thank you. Have we got a seconder? Councillor Martin, can we all vote? Thank you. 2150, 1540, 20 Sherwood Close, demolition of existing garage and shed and direction of single storey side and rear extension, including two new, I think that should be bow windows. Is it bow or box? Bow windows to front uh, and extension to existing vehicular crossover. Um, well, I certainly didn't see a reason to object to that. Uh, any comments from uh, Councillor Saunders? Um, yeah, I'd like to express some concerns about uh about this one. I mean, they're, they're big extensions at the uh, side mm -hmm. and rear. 
and yeah. there's there's quite an extensive area of, of flat roof that's being uh, created. Um, the other thing is the the widening of the crossover um, will yeah. get rid of of garden and it won't create overall any more parking. In fact, it kind of blocks um, people parking in front of the of the house, which it looks to me as though they they could do on the road um, currently. So, I mean, I think again, like some of the other proposals that have come forward, mm -hmm. I think at this stage we should be, I think we should be objecting and uh, asking that there are some improve, you know, improvements and a more sympathetic um, extension is, is proposed. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Councillor Williams? I'm, I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thanks. I'm happy to go down then and vote with you on that. We'll do that. We'll send that back. Is it bow windows that they were hoping to put in? Not box, is it? Yeah, bow. Oh. Yeah, okay. 21501541, 63 Osprey's Road, single story, rear extension, uh, in internal alterations. Uh, Councillor Saunders. Um, I'd be happy to propose that we don't object to this. I didn't see anything particularly. I would agree. I'm happy to second that. Thank you. And can we vote on that? Are we all happy with that? Sorry, yeah. can you repeat that? Was that no objection? No objection. Thank you. So we're all happy with that. 21501696, the lodge, Upper St Anne's Road. Demolition of existing garage, erection of single storey side and rear extension, and a new outbuilding. St Anne's. Any comments? Uh, oh, Councillor Saunders? Um, yeah, I'd propose um, no, no objection. It looks fine, doesn't it? I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Um, can we all vote on that? Thank you. 2150-1753, 8 Codling Drive. These are now there. Erection of a single storey side and rear extension. Side and rear. Councillor Martin. I think we should say no objection to this. It seems a very sensible um, proposal on this particular one. Um, and it's not going to affect any listed buildings or whatever because it's on a new development anyway. Okay. I think it was, I, I don't see that it's a, a major problem on that size of plot. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? No, I'm happy to second no objection. Can we all vote on that? Thank you. 2150-1805, 31 Preston Avenue, erection of a single storey side extension. Councillor Williams. Um, I, I, th I think we could, we can propose no objection. They're, they're quite, they're, they're, there's, it there seems to be enough room to do these, these sorts of extensions. It doesn't seem anything too dramatic, so. Um, yeah, no objection. Any other comments? No, I'm happy to second. And can we all vote on that? No objection. 2150-1844, 51 Ashford Road, demolition of existing garage, erection of a single storey side extension. No comments here. No. I think I would propose no uh, objection just no as we objection. have any others like this. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm happy to second that. Can we all vote on that? Thank you. 2150-1850, 4 Ethelbert Road, erection of a single storey, rear extension. Again. Uh, Councillor Saunders. Yeah, I'd propose no objection. Objection, yeah. 
I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Martin, and I'm happy to vote. We're all happy to vote on that one. Echo Road. Oh, now we've got this one. 251929. Land at Central Car Park, Leslie Smith Drive. Telecommunications notification for the installation. I think we all know. Have we all got the letter? Have we all got um, the information that uh, we were sent this afternoon? I don't quite work, understand whether it's going to be moved, whether it's temporary, whether. So, is anyone? Councillor Williams, it says. Thank you. Um, I, I thank, thank the Deputy Town Clerk for sending that um, information yeah. from yeah. Swell um, Planning Officer. Um, my, my understanding from, from, from that uh, information that was sent is that it almost suggests basically that as a town council, we don't really have any relevant input. <laughs> it's almost like it's kind of, yeah. I can understand it's a kind of a difficult sort of thing, and because it's not a, a regular planning. No. Uh, application, but um, it is quite it's quite a strategy it, consultee, but I think we were sent it as a neighbour almost anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, clearly, when we, we 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 spoke about this before, we objected to it, but in the sense of its its current location. But I think, I mean, clearly, um, that's not going to make a great deal of difference where it is at the moment. But I mean, we obviously probably continue to share our, our, our um, desire to see it suitably placed um, somewhere, you know, that doesn't impact kind of the, the central car park quite as much. Um, where that is, I don't know personally, but um, because I know, I understand that they want it somewhere in that vicinity. Um, so yeah, that's all I've really got to say on it really. Yeah, quite. Councillor Martin? Thank you. I think we should respond with the comment that I've given up. I gave up trying to count how many listed buildings it got. When it got to ten, I thought no. It's yeah. just this oh, affects the this affects the view of so many listed buildings within yes. that. Whilst we understand the need, and I think we've got to be reasonable about that as well. We do understand the need. Um, that location right by the um, it block does seem to my mind to be the wrong place um, mm. particularly as that is the main entrance to the town for visitors mm. uh, and the main car park for the for those shopping um, and if they can find somewhere else for it whether that be by approaching um the swimming pools um and raising it on the top of the swimming pool or the island thing, I think it would be preferable to what we've got at the moment. But I think we just need to comment that it needs to be very, they need to look very carefully at sight lines because of the number of um, grade one, grade two and grade two star listed buildings that, there, that that will affect the view of. Um, and I think that's all we can do at the, at the moment. Yeah, um, Councillor Williams, sorry. Oh. So I do, I'm really quickly, I was just thinking that um, I don't know if they've been in contact with the church, but um, I know that some, some fixed parts of the church is kind of, kind of have been used before to um, house these sorts of antennas. I'm, I'm sure they know, I'm not telling them what their job is, obviously, mm. but, but it's quite close to where it is currently and it, it would provide a higher point and it would be less intrusive, I guess, to the rest of the town. Um, we we didn't notice it when it was on top of Woolworths, did we? Because it was just the box on the top. But it's that long, and then the amount of space round it that was taken up in the car park as well. Um, any other comments? Councillor Saunders. Um, I mean, I think it probably is worth noting that the, the permanent site that they're proposing um, is is quite possibly better than the temporary um, site. And it's a, I think it's a, a lower mast with the permanent site. But I don't think we should be happy for it to be the permanent site, as Councillor Martin has said. I think we need, we need this to be seen as a, a, a temporary location and there should be an active, um, you know, they should be actively looking for a better um, location. I mean, someone actually said to me that the planning permission for um, 
the you know work on the old Woolworths building, which is where it was before, yeah. was actually about to lapse. So it's not. I'm not sure it's clear that um, they couldn't have uh, uh, stayed there. I mean, I don't. I don't know. But I think. I think if we could be saying that we yes. would like um, Swale and um, um, the the provider to be mm. actually looking for a better site because this mm. is a poor poor site. I think that absolutely. Would be really good. I totally agree with that. So um, we've got a proposer and a seconder for that and just need Councillor Williams and we could vote that that definitely, thank you, um, definitely. Right, I think that is the last item for this evening and those of us that are 